And why don't we hand it over to Virginia Tech uh, and see what you all have been up to. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. So we uh, really appreciate it. And uh, so my first question, how much time do I have? Why don't you plan on taking, we've got a, a fair amount of time to play with. So if we could do 10 or 15 minutes, that would be great. Okay, uh, can I share my screen? Uh, yes, please. Let's see, are there restrictions on that? Uh, anybody from AAAFC? I think we just have to um, designate it. So sorry, give me one sec. I think I can do this. Uh, if I can find the name, there we go. Hmm, I don't seem to have the ability to do that. Ben or Glenn, do you have? Let me go ahead and change something here. Um, okay, um, let's see. You should be able to share now with a share button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can see okay. it just fine. Good. Thank you. So we uh, we do this uh, this year. So thank you for Tripwire this very good framework for us to use. So we we use this for our multiple service to host our operations. And uh, uh, to, in today's presentation, we just uh, share our experience and how we using this service and uh, with AWS for our collections and service in the uh, Virginia Tech libraries. Uh, so we just, a uh, agenda right? uh, we just introduced the team and uh, also describe problem, uh, the problem we have and uh, how our design considerations and also a uh, picture overview with our future works. So uh, basically, this we just have a small team to work on here on this service. So thinking also here, she did a major works on the uh, AAA implementation, and uh, I set up the whole uh, infrastructure, and uh, we have a uh, make is a system engineer to deploy the system into the AWS, and uh, James is our manager. So the reason we want to move into the cloud is because uh, we, from in the in the past, we host all our service in on premises uh, service, just just use the machine, and uh, but the machine we face a lot of difficulty to maintain the server, and also when we continue to have a larger large uh, image, and uh, it's very difficult for us to to acquire a new machine or find a space or find a powerful computer to generate the tiles. And uh, for our situation, we don't even have the ability to have a survive server. It's not we cannot just the timing constraint the budget. We don't have the time to. Acquire to purchase a machine to have a tripwire server to host that. So we've used different approach and uh, we like to have like reduce the uh, human invention, like think about way we don't use the server at all and uh, just use static tripwire level zero convert image server and uh, just put all the pictures the image on the three. We want to do that, so we don't need to maintain, maintain the server or need to handle the OS page or something like that. We just can have this service all the time in the cloud. And the, we, our service can, our, our site can read this generate service, can provide the in now service. That's all, all we need. So we have this idea, we have this common goal, and then we just proceed. So our design consideration is very straightforward, so we don't want to use any server at all. We don't want to maintain a server. We want to use service. And uh, all the backend generation want to just like implement the uh, Lambda function and the tourist microservice. And uh, we have a single engine point, so we just need to upload files, test files, 
kill the server. Oh, no, right now we have this service, this, this kind of image in the one of the S3 bucket, and uh, you just generate the tiles for us. And uh, we, so we continue to have new collections. We don't, so in the past, it's like one by one, generate one set of collections, then generate another one. And uh, through this service, we want to have, we can do all, all like 10 collections at a time, or 20 or even 100. And we don't need to worry about the service limit or storage limit. We just use AWS. And uh, in the past, we need to write it out squares, figure out log, and uh, implement the uh, monitor thing, etc., to get the status. And uh, we want to delegate this to the service, user service AWS provide, so we can easily get the log monitor the cost and see the uh, all kind of different matrix, computer usage, something like that, generate for us and then we can generate a report. And uh, the last one is we want to eliminate is our automated goal to eliminate any maintenance need. We don't want to spend our time to maintain the service. We just want to use the service. So we have a uh, we have a site to we implement service to support this site. It's our first site to this site just like they have a lot of image query. We have hosted a lot of terabytes of images, and uh, we implement this service to generate tiles. So this this image is scan file. So it, this it, each image is very large, and uh, we want to use the service to address the to create and generate tiles, many things very quickly and in order, in order to support this site. So this is our image workflow. So we, we define this architecture, we just need to, first we have a S3 bucket to store all our image service. So it's S3, right? So we don't have any limit. We just up, whoever has a new set of image, we just upload to S3. And uh, we implement the Lambda server, the Lambda service. And uh, when we upload a test file into a S3 bucket, it will trigger the Lambda. And that Lambda will pass the content in the test files and create multiple batch job file, but batch jobs. And uh, that will do all in parallel. And each small batch job is will fetch a, a set of image and start generate the tiles and the finally store to another S3 bucket contain all the tiles and the many things. So this is all automatically. So the only thing we need to do just a single S3 is upload the test files. And under each batch job. It's like we inside that is a Docker file. It's a Docker image and hosts a TripleRF API. That TripleRF API to generate tiles and many things. We package that into a Docker and use this and assign a, like how much CPU, how much memory for that Docker image. It depends on the, we can totally control. In this part is a parameter so we can adjust that based on our need. And they just fetch the image from the bucket and generate and save to another bucket. So as you can see, this is a pipeline, so we can define a lot of the pipeline all at a time. And uh, we can define a compute, uh, compute environment. So we can have a certain kind, you can see you can have different CPU, and also memories. So based on different need, we can just adjust it and they use all use a pyramid to do that. And uh, so we can do a lot of time, many, many a time. So we can do one creation or 10 creations in here, just set up a job queue and they can, they can all do in parallel. And uh, the cost is, so the time will reduce a lot of time here. So even you can see in here, 
So the 200 gigabyte just take like 12 hours and then the cost like just 20 bucks. It's very, very, so time and the cost are very efficient. And uh, okay, so when we, gen we just spend, spend time and cost when we need to generate. Like this, you can see so in the past, we use a traditional way, just like use a code, write a script, do a set of calculations one by one, and uh, just use uh, a server to run the script. So you can see the cost is like a lot. And uh, we implement this pipeline, so you can see from our first to reduce to $18. And uh, so we make this work and put more, more creation, use this pipeline to generate. So the cost is still cheaper than before. And uh, so you can see from the July, we even we cannot finish one set of creation, we spend a lot of money on that. But in here, we already finished all like seven creations. And uh, it's just like it's one third of the cost. And we finish all the creation we, we need to generate. And uh, so after that, we finish our creation. So we can, if we don't, don't the server is, is like, we don't use the service, we don't need to pay anything. So the cost is to fix the legal. So our future work, so right now we, we like this uh, setup and uh, we will extend this architecture to support other creations, you know, generate creations for other creation, other servers. And also we can uh, apply this, as we address in the papers, we will use the architecture to implement for other service in a test. And uh, we also want to depart one click deployment template. Right now we just still like, you can based on our uh, GitHub, we open, this is open source. So we, but you still need to memory de deploy that, but we are continuing to deploy uh, one click deploy template. So we can like use a button and deploy the whole infrastructure. And also we want to optimize our current solutions. And uh, in here I use some resources we have. So the first one paper, we have more details and uh, we have GitHub, GitHub in here. So this is uh, including all everything we have in there. And we also have this uh, Docker, S3 uh, Docker we use. It's all in here. And uh, let's see it. Well, thanks very much for sharing that work. Uh, we also have a link to the article, the Code for Live article uh, from the demos as well. Um, what a wonderful model for a number of institutions who I think will be facing some of the similar constraints that you all have. Uh, are there questions? Perhaps as people are, are thinking of questions, um, we could go ahead and um, switch over and get David set up for, um, for his presentation. Uh, and then please feel free to ask questions in, in chat or in the notes document. And uh, the folks from Virginia Tech can respond uh, there as well. Okay, great. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Yinlin, if you don't mind stopping sharing your screen, then David can go ahead and switch over. And thanks again so much. That was really interesting work and uh, I'm sure a lot of people will pick up on this. Thank you. Okay, David, we can see your screen. 
Hi, everybody. Give me one second to shut windows. OK. Great. Hi, everybody. I'm David Newbury. I'm the software architect at the Getty. And I want to talk to you about a little experiment that we ran um, or are running uh, using IIIF. Um, it is a project that we call the Animal Crossing Art Generator. Um, for those of you who are not video game people or don't know people who are under the age of 12 or a software engineer or anyone else on my team, um, Animal Crossing is a Nintendo video game that lets you hang out on a virtual island with cute cartoon friends and plant trees and decorate your house and do all of those wonderful things that you can't currently do because we're all trapped in our bedrooms forever because of global pandemics. Um, it came out about a month ago and has been absurdly popular given that um, you can do all the things that you can't do. Um, and what happened was about a week ago, one of the engineers on my team, uh, Selena Zawacki, said, hey, it turns out that there's this tool called acpatterns.com, which is a tool that lets you take random images and process them in a in a way that allows you to get a QR code that you can load into this game. Um, I wonder if we could do this with our collection. And it was one of those ideas that was so good that I said, I think absolutely we can do this. Um, and thankfully, the people at AC Patterns um, open sourced all of the code they used to generate this tool. And so we used it to build out this application, which I will. Um, you see if I can switch my screen over to that chair. So this is the tool that we have um, for, to do this. And what it is is it's a tool that lets you go choose artwork, um, crop that artwork down to a particular thing, and it generates a little screenshot here that you can then import into the game using that QR code. Um, we've got a series of images that you can choose from our collection. You can also search our collection for um, images. These are all of the open content images that we have in our museum, all of which are available via IIIF. Or if you're not into yawning and you want uh, cats, that's been a very popular one, you can go and pull weird Renaissance cats and add them to your game. Um, and one of the, the other feature that we added that we were really pleased with was the ability to um, import things via IIIF manifests. And so <clears throat> um, if I'd been smart, I would have had a IIIF manifest that I could drop in here. Um, but this allows you to put in a, any IIIF manifest, and it will go and add it to this collection as well. Um, actually, I do have one. I go here and I paste that in. And I don't put um, it doesn't work, but that's how demos always go. Let's try one more time. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't work because that is not a triple manifest. Anyway, let's not try to demo things live that I didn't prepare for. And let me go back to the slides, which may at least be um, somewhat more usable. So yes, <clears throat> this is the tool that we built. Um, it shows off a bunch of, you know, it's really nice, the cool, it, and it's really nice because other people got to do it. Here's an example from Stanford using one of their things that they tweeted out. Um, here's an example from the Smithsonian using their images via IIIF. Um, it was really fun seeing all the different artwork that you could run through this and how many things are available through IIIF. So again, the idea came from Selena Zawacki, who's one of the engineers, and was about a week. We had a team of five who were working on rolling this thing out, um, which I don't know how it works at your institutions, but a week to launch a new software project is uh, slightly faster than the Getty tends to work. Um, so it was a really interesting experiment to see, could we actually do that? Um, 
I also put this in, this is the screenshot that we use to sell the idea to the senior leadership here. Um, goes to show that you can get pretty far with a bad cell phone photo and a famous artwork. So this is how it works on some of the tools we use. It's that select and search. Um, the AAAF image API is what we're using to pull the images in. There's a really amazing library called View Advanced Cropper, which lets you actually build in all of that crop functionality. Um, AC Patterns built all of the actual hard work that takes a, a image and converts it into that QR code and does the palletization and pixelization routines. Uh, Animal Crossing has pretty complicated um, requirements around that that they reverse engineered and built. Um, if it hadn't been for that open source code, there's no way we could have pulled this off. And we were using Netlify to deploy the software. Um, and so for the way it's using IIIF is that we're using that image API, as I said, for everything but the patterns because of the palletization requirements. Um, we're using manifest import from other institutions. Um, so if you've got a manifest, we go and we read that manifest and try to figure out the right image to show. And thanks to a wonderful Celeste suggestion from um, Glenn, we added in the draft content state. So you can put in a URL for somebody else's manifest using a standard parameter and it will load. Um, the other thing that I thought was really helpful is we worked with a really, really good writer on our um, communications team to write this blurb that explains what IIIF is. And I think um, I'm really impressed with what she did because it was this lovely contextualization of what IIIF is down into a small number of words. Um, it also helped a lot to, um, uh, one of the things that we ran into or did is try to figure out how we can talk about using IIIF manifest, but also keep the lawyers happy. Um, you know, this remember that you can only put other people's content with their permission was one of the things that we put in to help try to manage that. You can do a lot more in IIIF than you are able to do um, perhaps legally. And so trying to explain that to people is one of the things we were trying, we struggled with. So it went really well. Um, I'm really pleased with the response to this. And one of the things I'm pleased with is, you know, I'm really glad for the Getty stake that we've gotten some press for this. We've got a, you know, we got a couple articles written about it, um, lots of stuff on Twitter. But I'm also really happy that we, what we've managed to do is get IIIF written up in various places that wouldn't triply, typically talk about it. So Hypoallergic or even the LA Times talk about IIIF and, send, and link out to it. And that's one of those things that it really makes me happy to be able to take this thing that we've all been working on for so long and try to get it some, to use video games to get it some mainstream press. Um, I'm also, uh, this script did not work, but it was really fun seeing um, other institutions use this tool um, going and getting this out. And so uh, Richard Palmer took some of the uh, VNA's um, wallpaper collections and made some really cool wallpaper displays of it that you can see on their blog. Um, it's been successful and one of the cool things that we've seen is that well, first you can see the fact that our we managed to take our server down um, overnight um, but we've got about you know almost 200,000 people have used this but what's really cool is that 16,000 of those people have used it um, uh, using IIIF manifests not from our collection so about 10 percent of the usage of this thing has been using manifests not from our collection and that's a really fun statistic to be able to tell people um, so some things that we learned about IIIF, um, thumbnails are really, really helpful if you have them in your manifests um, because it lets us know for this piece of art, what's the thing you'd like us to show people? And so for the institutions that provided thumbnails or even services of their thumbnails, it was re a really nice way to pull them in. Um, we also learned that um, the label that you put on your manifest is really important. We ran into this um, not to point names, but the, to point fingers or to, to critique anyone, but uh, the Smithsonian uses their item ID as the label of their manifest. And I'm sure, you know, it makes a lot of sense. We are doing, we were doing something very similar. Um, but if I'm trying to pull your manifest and contextualize it for people and don't want to show the entire metadata block, um, it's, it was confusing for people to see random numbers in there. Um, the, we also were trying to figure out with the copyright how to manage rights and attributions. 
because um, those were two things that we felt we really should show. Um, and what we ran into, and you know, this is something that we have the same problem with ours, is that what's in there right now is enough to make the lawyers happy, but not enough for someone to understand what they can do with it. Um, if it's come, if it's out of the context of the web page of our web page, and so that's something that we think could be really helpful to help, you know, to keep in mind as we do this, and we will be thinking about this. You know, I want to show your artwork, and I want to help people understand, um, but I don't know how to do that. Um, we also learned that it was really, really hard to explain to people how to get manifests, and uh, thank. Thank you guys at the AAA community so much for these explainers and these documents. We just linked to it because we couldn't figure out how to do it. And it was enough that people could figure it out. So um, if, if we're going to play around as a community with this idea of sharing manifests, particularly for non-technical people, I agree that one of these things that we really need to figure out is how do we, how do we explain to someone that when they go to their site, this is the thing that goes into IIIF world. Um, and in the crazy technical edge cases, it turns out that uh, many of us have logos, but most of those, some of those logos are not cores enabled, um, which meant, because they're typically just images, but we were trying to load them in via JavaScript so we could put them in this canvas and it didn't work, which is one of the reasons why we didn't end up using we, logos for most other people's artwork. So interesting technical things we discovered. Um, and again, the docs that the AAAF community has been putting together around where are manifests, which collections are available, how do you find things on those collections, um, were incredibly useful as we tried to push this thing forward. So that's the tool that we built out. Um, I, it's still very new to us and I'm still recovering from a week of doing this as opposed to all the things I'm supposed to have been doing, but it was a really, really fun experiment and a really fun way to show off what you can do with IIIF. So thank you all. Thanks so much, and what, what wonderful work that is. Um, Jason has a question over in chat. Would it be possible to add a link to our page which more directly links into the tool so folks wouldn't need to know about manifests? Uh, Jason, are you responding to Ben Baklar? No, I, I, I wasn't, but I, I was um, just asking, yeah, if our, on our own digital collections page, we had a link, would it be possible to have a link that kind of links into the tool that David was talking about so that someone wouldn't have to like know how to get the manifest URL, but would just click here and you can, you know, begin getting this uh, manifest into um, the game. Absolutely. That I think is one of the benefits of Greg's, uh, Glenn's suggestion to use the content state API. So if you add a triple F dash content parameter with a link to your manifest, it should load automatically. Um, let me try see if I can quickly make an example of that. Um, and just to add, I think that'd be great if, if loads of people can tweet with their examples from their institution using that preloaded link. Uh, I think that'd be great. Yeah, so if I put into chat um, that URL, that should pop the uh, NGA's highlights manifest in, which will give you a Van Gogh. Um, this is, um, and I'm sure Glenn, you can talk more eloquently about this than I can, but this is the, the new draft AAAF content state, which is just a set of standards for providing that, how to link somebody else's manifest into your existing tool. Very cool. Uh, other questions for David? And Ben, it, I would love to um, take credit for that, but that is the IIIF content state parameter, uh, IIIF content. Um, that's it's the community and the, the editor's decision, not mine, but it's a good one. Agreed, agreed. I'm struck by these two demos, how um, 
some of the the foundational problems that AAAF has faced are being brought out. One is the institutional implementation side of things. And again, thanks very much to the Virginia Tech folks for sharing so much of how they got started. Uh, but then from the Getty, uh, outreach to a, a much broader audience. Um, so thank you so much for the, the marketing that you've done, for the, the sharing that you've done. This is, this is really wonderful to see. And I hope that uh, both of these serve as models for uh, other groups moving forward. Uh, Tom Kramer says, this is a really good discovery for humans use case. Do we have any other questions for either of our presenters? I guess I'll ask um, David. I I hesitate to even ask this because it'll sound ungrateful. But I'm just curious if there are plans for you know any any additions or um, other things, other ideas that this has sparked for you and your team. As I said, I I know this has been a lot of work, and just maintaining it is we're grateful for that. But just curious if yeah, there are next steps or next initiatives that this has kind of prompted you to talk about. I think. Um, I think particularly given that Nintendo is about to come out with its own art gallery for um, Animal Crossing, this one I think is done. But I think what this has really sparked in my team is the idea that we can use these, um, this AAAF resource that we have to, to try to play around and present our collections and AAAF collections in general in an interesting way. Um, I can tell you uh, no promises, but the next thing that my team's been really excited to do is start playing around with the dimensions piece. Um, and so if we're going to build the next experiment that's on our docket once we've all recovered is to, is to try to do a, this is how big images are next to things in the real world using the IIIF um, real world dimensions extension. So it gives us an excuse to try to implement it in our collection and to play around with that in context. So it's a that idea of what can we do that's in the spec that may not be being used because there's not a clear use case for it and try to see what we can do to build something entertaining for people. That's great, thank you. I look forward to it if, if and when it, it happens. Okay, um, well, thank you. Uh, both uh, the Getty and Virginia Tech for presenting today. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording at this point. <laughs>